My name is Richem Nisi, based in Johannesburg. I am the creative director of my namesake brand, Richem Nisi. Growing up in Johannesburg has definitely influenced how I approach design. It also influenced just the reason why the brand exists. The brand was dedicated to speaking my family name alive, which is something that you see a lot in luxury brands. That's what I wanted to do and injecting a lot of like the culture in Johannesburg was something that was necessary to do because it's all that I know and I always want to create from a place of lived experiences. I'm actually from a partially creative family. <laughs> Everyone in my family, they're all teachers from my mother down to my sister. But my eldest sister used to be an artist. She used to be a fine artist and she was the core of my inspiration. Growing up, just watching her dress the way she wanted to dress and like she always wanted to stand out. She wanted to become a spectacle and I just found that so inspiring and I just always watched her when I was young. And I just wanted to become her. Like, you know, I always, I remember just looking at her and just being like, hmm, okay, I want that wig on my head. I want that skirt on my waist. And you know, that's just the environment that I grew up in. Since the brand is inspired by my family, it, you know, the heritage just comes in instantly because in the beginning, it was mostly inspired by my late great grandmother. And you know, the last season that we did, it was inspired by my grandfather, James. And it's through telling those stories and injecting all the things that they are and just what they did culturally and what they did for their community and just injecting all those things. I am from the Tsonga tribe and we are known for color, pattern and everything is just so vibrant and the colors and the patterns always clash but they work so well with each other and that's something that I inherited from my tribe. So the reason why the brand is almost unisex and like there's no binary is because I just believe that like people need to engage with clothing the way they want to. I think we've set, you know, these weird boxes that don't make sense. No one said that a woman should wear a skirt and no one said that a man should wear a skirt, but I think it's something that is now ingrained in our culture and I want to undo that, particularly because growing up and seeing queer people in the township and like just how you see them every single day of your life, but in conversation, in images, it's something that is erased. It's something that you don't see. And I think I just, I'm against that erasure of like just how people present themselves. And I think that's why it comes through in the brand a lot. I think of clothing as clothing and people should be able to do whatever they want to do. It's like having a cell phone. Everyone should, everyone can have a cell phone, you know? There's no right or wrong on how to use that cell phone. It's yours. So that's how I look at clothes. If the Rich Nisi brand was a scent, it would have to come from my mother's name, so we just bottle up daisies. Her name is Daisy, so yeah. Collaboration is a key focus for us because I personally believe in conversation and everything that we do is a conversation and we want people to engage in that conversation. Even when we did our collaboration with Adidas, it was the first time an African brand had worked with them and it was a completely different context. You could even see with the clothing, the colors and the patterns were so much more different than uh, what they usually do. And I think that's so important in collaboration because it gives you a new perspective and it just starts a new conversation and also opens doors. So that's why it's something that we really focus on and believe in. The importance of the Smiley Future Creators Fund is that you get to engage with an iconic brand that symbolizes unity and happiness and just general optimism and we get to engage with other fashion designers from all around the globe who have different stories and different ways of doing things. And I think, you know, it's so beautiful when we learn different techniques from each other because we are able to preserve them, especially in a world that's always moving and things are always digitized. I think it's so important to then ground things and work in a sustainable way as well. So when the opportunity came to do this collaboration, immediately I thought of Smiley and I thought of what we stand for as well. And it's optimism and celebrating blackness and celebrating people and unity. And the capsule is called People because I, I really wanted to, you know, make it very evident that it's about people and it's about people's happiness. I just wanted to create a collection that is very, I don't know, you look at it and you want to smile immediately and it makes you feel warm. The colors are warm and they're very inviting. My favorite piece in the collection is definitely the mohair dress. Uh, we worked with Cape Wool um, for the mohair and I think it just goes back to that idea of community. So many people contributed to that dress from collecting the wool to creating yarn in it to dyeing it and then putting the garment together. It's the one piece that has a lot of heart and so many people touched it and yeah, you can feel the love in it. I think the most challenging part about being a young designer and working sustainably is knowing when to stop and like just 
trusting your gut even though there's demand and because we just don't believe in making clothes unnecessarily and hoping that they sell everything that we make has been ordered and it's made to order and it's made with love because you can always tell when a garment is made for you versus a garment that was just made to meet demand you know working much slower is also such a beautiful process as well because you are aware of everyone that's contributing to that garment so it's so much more better to work in a you know a conscious way and just being aware of how whatever you're making is contributing to the environment and to the people working on it and the people consuming it as well. I think the only way to avoid overconsumption is to buy precious clothes that you really love. So instead of you know leaning towards trends and things that like you know into FOMO, buy something that you really love and something that is precious and something that was made with love. And I think that's when you'll start appreciating clothing and it won't just be another piece of fabric, it will mean something more to you.